So it wasn't long ago, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max launched just back in September, but I've been thinking a lot about the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And one of the reasons I've been thinking a lot about this phone is because a lot of people mention it in the comments. They talk about how, you know, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is, is worth it over stuff like the iPhone 14 Plus, for example, as you can see right here, just for being around the same price point and giving you basically a camera system that gives you an extra camera, you get the more premium build, you know, similar battery life, although the 14 Plus is a little bit better. But in this episode, I just wanna talk about why you should definitely consider the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This thing is amazing still. All right, so if you wanna make the video, you know, long story short, it's basically the same as an iPhone 14 Pro Max. You could say that, but there is upgrades to that phone. That's a short, easy answer, and the best iPhone out right now is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But the price of this one right now can be found at $849, $899, maybe even less, and that is actually cheaper than even some 14 models. Like, we're talking the regular 14 model. If you get some more storage on, say, a 14, let's say you go with a 512 gig, this smaller iPhone will cost you more than a 13 Pro Max if you find that second hand. And when you think about everything that's coming included with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, this just comes off as a really good deal right now. And a lot of people do appreciate that, including myself. Now, I wanna mention the next thing, and that is the build. So again, I wanna reference back to an iPhone 14. It's not a direct comparison, but this would be for the 14 Plus as well. You're gonna get Apple's cheaper aluminum build. And this kind of reminds me of what they do in the Apple Watch line, the iPad line. The cheaper products get the lighter aluminum. The more premium products get the stainless steel or the titanium. In this case, you will be able to get yourself a premium stainless steel build with the more luxurious looking body for <laughs> around the same price, if not cheaper than some current 14 or 14 plus models. I mean. Doesn't that alone make it a thing to consider that you can have? It's kind of like when you get a car, you can go with one year old car that's premium, has the features, but got a little bit of miles on it. Or you can go with a brand new base model with, you know, basically the base features, just cloth seats, you know, automatic windows, but no sunroof and a radio, but no Apple CarPlay, like stuff like this, you know, it's similar here. You can go with the latest base model, or you can go with the last year's premium model for around the same price, and you have to decide what matters more to you. The next thing is the display. So if we take a look at Apple's display here, we're looking at 1,000 nits of brightness. Now, the 1,000 nits of brightness is very good because you know, outdoors, you can see this easily, but it's also not overly bright. I actually find that the iPhone 14, this is so weird. I always complain that I want more brightness, but I actually find that the iPhone 14 Pro Max too bright. Like literally it's, it's too bright. Like I have to lower it down. I even have to turn on reduce white point for the iPhone 14 Pro Max at nighttime because it's super bright. Like it's overly bright in my opinion. Not that I want them to reduce it because it's better to have more than less, especially in sun. But I'm just saying you have a lot of brightness and it's not overly bright on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And not only that, you do get the same 120 hertz display. So everything looks incredibly smooth when you scroll. There's no delay, no chop, and it just looks like butter as you go through. A lot of people say, why do you keep saying butter? Why do people say butter? Because if you look at butter on a frying pan, the thing just glides across this, the frying pan the heat's too high, you burn it. But at the same time, just like butter, this thing just slides across your finger. So very smooth and beautiful. It's also OLED and same size. So, and again, if you consider that some 14s with taxes, with higher storage could cost more than this, that's no reason. I mean, it's, it's not very hard to see why the 14 and 14 plus are not showing high demand. It's the consumers are aware of these things at this point. So that's just something to point out. Now, performance also is something that is great on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. You feature that same A15 Bionic chipset coupled with six gigs of RAM. 
Now that's similar to what the iPhone 14 models offer. So last year is not really behind. The all new Apple TV 4K also just got that A15 Bionic. That thing is a beast. It's still faster and benchmarks higher than some current Android models that just came out this year. So it's still a very fast chip that has not aged really at all. The A16 is a slight bump, but nothing major. Now, when it comes to software, I gotta say, this is the area where like, I, I think it just get, it's getting a little boring because like there's no really major separators. And I think Apple could do a better job of separating, you know, the bigger iPhones from the smaller iPhones, giving the bigger ones that cost more some software enhancements. But it doesn't matter if you're using 14, 13, 13 Pro, 12 Pro, 12, 11, 11 Pro, your software experience is essentially identical. Yes, you do get a few difference in the camera area of stuff, but that's only when you're opening up the camera. Other than that, you're really going to be operating the same exact software. And that's a good thing. And that means it doesn't matter which size you go with, you're going to know how to operate and use this phone right here. So definitely good thing, but I also would like to see some separators. But at the same time, this phone's still amazing because the best iPhone out right now, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is still featuring essentially the same software here. So no major differences whatsoever makes this phone still an amazing option. And now the cameras. Now I actually just got married a little bit ago. So if you've seen on my Instagram, a lot of you've already seen that. That's why I'm rocking these rings in the video. And I'm not looking for, you know, congrats or all that. I mean, appreciate it if you want to, but I'm just trying to make a point. My best man was using the 13 Pro Max. I was using the 14 Pro Max. He sent me a bunch of his photos and I wanna drive this point home. He was using the 13 Pro Max. I could barely tell. I, I didn't even know. Like the, the results were almost the exact same. Like they didn't look any different. So yes, I know the iPhone 14 Pro Max does give you the 48 megapixels. And I do like having the latest and greatest. I like having the better, you know, cinematic video and the better front facing camera. But at the end of the day, if I was still using the 13 Pro Max, based on the photos I received, I can tell you the photos, the, the, the results are just fantastic. They're amazing. Honestly, they're still it's still an amazing camera phone that can easily go the next three years or so before you're gonna see any thing that's like groundbreakingly better for your experience. Although I think Apple will be making some changes soon. I still can see this phone being a well, well good usage for the next few years, just like you can use an 11 and Pro Max right now and still get really good results. Another thing is the audio performance is still strong on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. In both the top and bottom mics, they're rich, they're loud, they're clear, so a very good experience there as well. Now, battery life is something I also quite like about the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This phone gives you an amazing battery life, easily an all day into a second day phone. That extra brightness on the 14 Pro Max has cost me quite a bit of battery life. I definitely notice this thing draining if I crank that brightness up past 50%. And with this always on display that I do use quite a bit, I do get you know a definite decrease in battery life. And when I'm using always on display feature for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I also get reduced battery life. Another point that I wanna mention is that this iPhone still looks like the most current iPhone. The average person will see you rocking this and be like, he's got the latest iPhone. Nobody's gonna really know. You can't really pull this out and until you flip it over to the front, you're not gonna know without the dynamic island who's using what. So you can still walk around proud using your 13 Pro Max or picking one up and knowing that your phone looks super modern. It looks just like the brand new stuff that's out right now. The next thing is that Face ID hasn't changed, so there's no real reason there. The Dynamic Island on the 14 Pro Max, not a direct comparison, but they still brought it to the 14s, this notch on the 14, so this still looks relevant, and there's still notches on the MacBooks, so it still looks okay. It doesn't look like some you know, super old technology right away. Like a lot of Android phones might change, you know, the design of quite a bit year to year. Not lately with phone companies like Samsung, they're keeping things pretty similar, but certain brands will just change it up a lot and looks very different. But Apple's not looking too different here this year. So still, this still looks modern. Graphite here, some people like over the space black. You also have the Alpine green. You do have, you know, the gold colorways that sometimes look a little different. and. 
maybe you just prefer the Sierra Blue of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So there is different color options that are arguably better to individual people. In conclusion, I wanted to make this video because I keep seeing comments about this phone talking about it and I wanted to give my take on it. I do agree with a lot of you. I do think this is an amazing option still. And honestly, I say this like almost every year, but if I wasn't doing YouTube and I was on this phone, I definitely would not have done the upgrade. I probably would still be on something like an 11 Pro Max or 12 Pro Max currently if it was my own phone usage outside of you know loving and reviewing tech. Like if I was just a regular consumer, I would probably be on 11 Pro Max or 12 Pro Max. So this one's still incredible. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if I missed anything on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. We will cover this again in future software updates, maybe a revisit in 2023. And if you wanna see anything else on the 13 Pro Max, maybe a comparison I forgot or something like that, be sure to get those comments down below. I do try to read as many as I can. Can't get to all of them, but I try my best and I try to respond with a video in the future. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.